I mean, you know what I'm saying? I just want to get on camera real quick and talk about a few things real quick. Uh, one of those things being Jaguar, right? Um, as many of y'all know, for the better part of, I don't know, three years since I've been on here blogging, I've always held Jaguar right in high regard. Really have. Um, I want to say this right. I've supported her. I supported what she does. Um, I have hoped that um, this is all about saying the right words. Just give me a moment because I don't want to go too far out the line and make it look like I'm being a bully or something like that because I'm not, you know. But um, for the better part of everything, I've always supported this woman. Um, I've supported you as a music artist. I've supported you when you were down. Give me one second, guys. Let me share this real quick because I want a lot of people to hear this. They have to. So give me one second. And I hope everybody's having a good night tonight. Rained a little bit here in the Northeast, in the Tri-State, New York area. So, you know, that's how that goes. And we're going to get into this. I just want to make sure I get enough people in here. Or a few people, which is also a problem. <laughs> because of a position I took a long time ago. And, um... Be it as it will, I took that position because I said to myself, you know what? I support Jaguar, right? I think that um, I don't like what you was doing. I don't like what you were saying, but I supported you nevertheless. And um, I encouraged other people to support you. When you were at your lowest, lowest points and you were being arrested and people were making fun of you. And often enough times you guys have seen me come on here and defend Jaguar, right? And it's been to my detriment. It is... Um, Cause me for some people to unsubscribe to me once they hear me mention her name. It is cause for some people not to donate to me anymore because I mentioned her name. All in the fact that what I saw was I saw a sister in help. Like I said, I'm not here to be malicious. That's not my thing. And so when I was talking and when I was moving along here and having this conversation, I ran into somebody, his brother named King Payne. And um, I have followed behind King Payne for a while now. And there's a lot of things that I, I keep hitting. I shared something with King Payne today about something that had happened previously that I thought he should be brought to his attention. You know what I mean? Like I said, y'all excuse my appearance right now. I just jumped on camera real quick. But um, this latest debauchery or a little pickle that we got here um, involving Jaguar and her, you know, aforementioned mistreatment of King Payne. Well, in the words of Rico in the movie Belly, I don't like that shit. Mm -mm. I don't like that shit. I don't like that shit at all. And um, so I got to be honest here. I put the integrity of my channel. I lost subscribers. I have people that don't want to donate to me anymore because I back Jaguar, right? And that's cool. That means you weren't loyal in the first place. I can live with that. But the problem I have really is, is this. Not the people that unsubscribed or whatever. They weren't loyal in the first place. So in the long run, sooner or later, they would have got over on you anyway. You get what I'm saying here? So to those people, see you later. But um, so I hold no content about that. But what has happened is because I've supported Jaguar and I have numerous different blogs and posts up about her, including her own Coca-Cola commercial that she had at one time, a lot of people took personal to that and they said, you know what? We're not going to donate to you anymore. Now, if y'all have watched me for a while, y'all have seen multiple people come into my chat room and mention this, right? And so today, yesterday, and the day before, I always listen to what people got to say, and I always make sure I hear both sides of the story before I make my final decision. And so in this situation, I had to look at a various amount of factors. One, I have lost a significant donator base by backing this woman. And like I said, ain't no big deal. I'm not here to bash you. And so what I'm saying? What you have is personal. I don't like what you did, but I'm not here to necessarily bash you. But to act as counsel, as I always have, as professional, you know. And so um, I overheard what you had said about a few particular individuals. I don't know these individuals. Only one I can vouch for, and I would say that I would have a angle in, in 
backing them would probably be King Payne in this particular situation. And the reason I say that, Jay, well, is because, and I know you'll probably see this. The reason I say that is because of multitudes of people coming in and saying the same thing. Now, at first, initially, a lot of people said, oh, she's just going to screw you over in the end, da, da 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 And I said, well, give her a chance. Y'all heard me here on this channel. Say, give her a chance. So if you turn against me, you look foolish. You look foolish. And um, there was a time before, and we don't have to get into that, that you turned against me before we got to this moment. Remember, Jaguar? I remember. And I remember the subject we were talking about. But that's not for anybody to know. The problem is this, sweetheart, and I'm going to say this to you very clear, and I hope you hear this, okay? I just got off a phone call, and I know that person going to show up here in a few minutes. I just got off a phone call because someone that I had told, how can I say it? Someone I had told in the industry, fuck it. Someone I had told in the industry, I said, yo, check this guy out. I'm not going to say who that person is. I think he got some talent. You understand what I'm saying? And I do this all the time. People that know me, they know I do this all the time. I sing the artists. I'm one of the first people that... I was talking to Scarlett before she even popped in New York. You know what I'm I'm saying? So I do this all the time. You know, I see personalities. I see certain people. I bring it to the attention of certain individuals within the industry or whatever the case may be so they can make a decision. You don't have to believe me or whatever, but I worked in this business for 17 years. You don't know who the fuck I know. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Now, some of these other people, they'll blow your horn and act like they, you know what I'm saying? But with me, there's no denying it whatsoever. So I sent that particular clip of the gentleman or whatever, whatever, and he recognized the name. In fact, some people have been asking me about some situations prior to then, and I played coy and I played dumb. And act like I totally didn't know it all. I said, I don't know what they're talking about or whatever. And I never put it out there. And I never put it out there. Why? Because of the pure simple reason. I didn't find any need to. And you can believe what you want to believe or don't. I don't care. Point is, I never turned my back on the woman. I never would. And so I saw this woman and she turned around and she, you know, there's another woman that's coming in. I was on the exclusive end, too. So this is not hearsay. I was actually there to hear what these people had to say. I also went and listened to what Jaguar had to say as well. And I said to myself, okay, this shit don't match up. You understand? And uh, let's say I got in a little pickle as far as what is my decision based now? You understand what I'm saying? And that's hard because for the better part of two and a half, almost three years, I have supported this woman in faculty. Whether you know it or not, Jag, well, if you see this, I was a person doing your birthday when you was locked up that let King Payne know it was your birthday. It was me. You don't believe me? Ask him when you get the chance. I'm responsible for a lot of people out here. A couple of stars, too, believe it or not. They'll never give the acknowledgement because, well, we know how our business goes, right, Jag? So, as I'm making my progression to getting back in the industry and doing a couple other things or whatever, by going to the studio, singing and things like that or whatever, I was trying to give the same inspiration and influence for Jag to do the same thing. I wanted to see her do big things. I wanted to see her grow. I wanted to see her blast off because I knew she was talented. And unfortunately, what Jaguar did was when she got out this time for, what is this, the third, fourth time? You retrograded to doing the same fucking thing again, which was getting out, being rambunctious, being obnoxious, cussing out people, treat people like they ain't shit or whatever, whatever. When you know damn well you couldn't do this with Clyde, who mentored you, who brought you in the game, who coincidentally enough was a part of, well, Bad Boy Entertainment intricately. Moved us from Third Avenue all over to 1540 Broadway where I started, you know? And if you guys don't know that address, 149th, 3rd Avenue, whatever, I've been in that building because later on, my boss, still some boss, you know what I'm saying? Sean Prez had his offices there with power moves. Same office building. So I took it upon myself to say today, after investigating and getting the information that I've gathered, right, Jaguar? And being the fact that you come from a certain elk of men as... I do. One of those in particular, Clive Davis. 
you know how this thing goes. You know PR, you know media, and you know we either pick one or three. We either pick the version I picked this time of I'm going to say whatever the fuck I want to say, and if you don't like it, fuck you. Or you could pick the, hi, everybody. How's everybody doing? Great. Oh, yeah, great. You know, you could pick that version. Or you could pick the third version. Yeah, we're going to fucking rock and do whatever the fuck we want it. You know what I mean? There's different versions of personalities you could pick when you come into this, and is that your disguise? Discretion. Discretion, excuse me. You picked to be the rambunctious tirade one. And based off your humble beginnings, where you come from, with the roots, with Jay, or many other people, you were a very different personality then. But I just wrote out something the other day on one of my social media apps, and I said, some of you people have become some of the worst versions of yourself currently. Meaning 10, 15, 20 years ago, you was not this person. If you was this person, you harbored very well. Is that fair? And so I remember saying to myself right before you got released from prison, which King Payne helped you get released from prison. Let's not make a mistake about that. You were able to bash all these people and say what you want to say right now as you're out. And I heard you with my own two, what, two ears today and yesterday. It was an older one I caught up on yesterday. You had the opportunity to be something totally different than what the fuck you're doing right now. And I'm disappointed. And the reason I'm disappointed is before you got out, before you even got arrested, I was suggesting the same thing. See, I had direct interaction with Jaguar. This is not like somebody talking third person or vicariously. My name is Davin Lewis, 17 years with Bad Boy Entertainment. Three different distributors, Atlantic, BMG. You know, you can verify me. I'm, I'm very easy to verify. I'm one of the very few people on here. And I always like to big them uh, big face Gary from Rockefeller Records. Choke No Joke from Rockefeller Records. Star from the Star Report. Atlantic Records, which was also one of our distributors at one time. I'm of that elk of those gentlemen that actually lived the experience we were actually there at the times. So a lot of these things were transparent. Now, one of the things that I wasn't there for was it wasn't there for Jaguar Wright at the time. But we heard enough about her. We revered her. And some of y'all will say, oh, she's, you know, she was never nobody. Well, that's eh, quite the opposite. She sold some units. Clyde decided to keep her on. And even though it was a neo-soul type of vibe, I can say that was condestined of the times at that time, along with the flow of trees, along with the, what the roots were doing, Bahamadia was doing, that whole Philly movement, really, where that sound was coming out of, that neo-soul sound. And so, I know this is going to sound a little winded out to some of y'all, but I have to do this to come full circle. So I congratulated you, I applauded you, and in some cases, you'll be like, well, who the fuck are you to say I, I can feel it? Who the fuck are you to say something about me? Hey, you, you, you better listen. I got off a probably 45 minute call tonight. There ain't no chuck to it, ain't no joke or whatever, whatever you think that you want to, quite frankly, at this point. And um, the person said, yo, I just watched that live from your man's. I'm not gonna say who it was. I'm not saying if it's King Payne or somebody else, but it was like, y'all just watched that live from your man's. That was crazy. I said, yeah, that's what they saying she did. You know what I mean? And uh, this is somebody you should be worried about. Let's put it that way. And um, they ain't too pleased, Jag. They ain't too pleased at all. You have, um, opened up Pandora's box for now people are looking for other videos and other things that you've said previously prior to this. You know what I'm saying? And um, it's scary for some people because the pure simple fact that uh, they didn't know that you had said the things that you had said. Now, Talib Kweli and his punk ass, he had something to say the other day and I'll say, don't pay no attention to that sucker ass motherfucker. Shout out to most deaf though, but that nigga's a sucker. I had direct interaction with Tali Kweli. Yes, you know what I'm talking about, you motherfucker. We had direct contact with each other via Twitter some years ago and you said all kinds of obnoxious shit to me. In fact, you encouraged some of your people to come over and say some obnoxious shit to me. So fuck Tali Kweli. Tell him I said, and I said to you in person. I don't give a fuck if you were up rocks or a couple of niggas you got rolling with you from Brooklyn. 
I know. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You not a gangster, but the niggas around you are gangsters. You understand? You not a gangster though. And so I will say this about Tali Kwali. Even though what he said was forced, even though what he said about her was a little bit obnoxious himself. He's a narcissist himself, if you ask me. But he had a point. He had a point. He had a point. And the reason he would look at it the way he would look at it is because of who you become. You're not a musician no more, Jaguar. You a gangster. I'll say it for you again. You're not a musician anymore, Jaguar, right? You a gangster. You a grifter. And some would say a robber now. And you traded all the talent that you had. And don't, 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 don't give me like I'm coming at you bad. Bitch, I was down with you to the motherfucking grills fall off until you did this shit right here. And I said, well, you lost all credibility with me now because now you look like a fraud. And now all these people out here saying that you took money from them. This woman is calling into the shows and talking about how you got over on her after she gave you $1,000 here, $1,000 there, $1,000 here. You know, from what I'm gathering, a couple hundred here, or whatever, offered to give her credit card so you could take a car and you and your now girlfriend that you left your husband for, it, it, you know, or whatever, whatever the case may be. It's a whole bunch of weird shit in my opinion anyway. But nevertheless, we stuck by Jaguar right. We stuck by Jaguar right, many of us, because we loved her and we believed in her. And we said, oh, she's going to come home and do the right thing. And the first song that you make when you come home is some kind of diss song or some shit like that. I heard that corny ass shit. And I said, well, no, this chick is way more talented than this. Why is she doing this trash? I was hoping that you would fall the route to what I was saying because what it would do is it would ocean in and open up. And you know exactly what I'm talking about. You're from the music industry. And I know you'll see this. You watch all the videos that have your name titled in them. So I know you'll see it. And you know who I am. We're not strangers. So if anybody's hearing this, she knows who I am. I know who she is. We have been on camera and talked before. We have interacted with each other before. And in fact, she spent three and a half hours on the show one night talking about me after I hung up. Okay? You know exactly who I am. You know exactly who I'm connected to. All right? You know who I'm talking about. So you know I ain't telling you no lies here. You know, this is a real deal. All them other podcasters and bloggers or whatever, they playing with you. You know the shit I'm talking about? These people ain't playing with you. So let me tell it to you, and I hope you listen when you hear this, and if you happen to know her or talk to her, send this over to her. She needs to know this. You have spent the better part of two and a half years talking about almost everybody in the industry and you have separated yourself from a lot of friendships. You have separated yourself from a lot of prospects. And what I was trying to tell you, Jaguar, last time was, this your last time. Do you remember me saying that? The post is still right here on my page. Still right here. I did a whole hour and a half, I think it was. I went to look it up and I saved it just so you would see it. And I'll share it later on. But I told you, I said, if you do this one more time, it's over. It's over. Nobody's going to mess with you. anything you do now. You got to do independent. And there's going to be some people going to try to throw a monkey wrench in that too. They've done it to me before. But I told you, Jaguar, that time that you started talking about, well, let's just say Miss Kim. Okay. Let's just say Miss Kim that's connected to a very big personality that happens to be connected to my vein. You understand? That's all I need to say about that. We don't need to talk too much. I'm not here for the gossip. I'm here to just talk to you. And so you understand why I'm taking the position I'm taking. And so you understand why I can't, I can't advocate for you any longer. Now, you can think what you want to think or whatever, whatever. But if you know, like I know, I come from the vein of Sean Prez, Malcolm Miles, James Cruz, and you know who they work for. Do I need to say any more? And so... Your name is buzzing now because one person saw a video. Now, a couple other people saw videos of you, Jag, and they didn't really think nothing about it. It was like, oh, she told about her. Don't worry about it. Oh, she told about him. Don't worry about it. It's a possibility. But when you start talking about certain individuals, I can't help you. 
those individuals going to do what they want to do in regardless. So I'll say like this, Jag. It's been fun. It's been real. And there's nothing you can say right now because of your gumption and your diction on, if not directly screwing people over, indirectly screwing people over, or maybe just your temperament of everybody's against you because of what you've seen in the tirade of what you have created. You came back gossiping. And it's far for me to remove myself because I started on here on YouTube almost three years ago now to quite a bit of a pickle myself. And at that time, I talked, in case you guys don't know, I talked about how I had a discrepancy with my bad boy brothers and Diddy at the time because I felt that niggas wasn't putting in the effort that they should be. Now, we've since gotten past that, obviously. <laughs> you know what I mean? Apologies were made on both parts. Hands were shaken on both parts. And a lot of people truly didn't understand. You understand what I mean? But ain't the same for you. See, you told so much shit on this motherfucker that a lot of people ain't going to forgive you. And as they start getting wind more and more and more because of this internet thing and more people's involvement in internet and all these different places like, you know, Revolt TV, All Deaf Digital, and a couple of others. You now, pay attention to me, because you know how we talk. I can't talk to you that way on here. It's, it's too obvious. But you, if you hear this, Jaguar, listen to me. You have created an atmosphere now that cannot be controlled anymore. Because your name, when it's associated with anything online, is associated most of the time with a negative connotation. And um, that's a bad thing for you. So I'm not here to diss you. I'm not here to talk shit about you. To be quite honest with you, I'm quite surprised by what the fuck you did and how you came out of this. That boy King Payne helped you. He helped you significantly when no one else would. He bailed you out of jail. This was your third time being in jail. If you were a guy, they would have kept you the first time. Is that fair? And so, after all your tirades and we defended you, even though knowing eh, there's a little something going on here, but you know what? That's Jaguar fucking right. We love her. I want to see her make it. See, I, I think if anybody was advocating for you, it was that man and myself. Shout out to King Payne, man. But, I can't do it. I can't do it because, see, if I do it any longer and I take up for you, defend you, or whatever the case may be, at that point, now I look stupid. I don't want to say his name, but there's about four people from my camp now that know what you've said. Out of those four people, one of them counts. And, um... I didn't tell on you. I didn't snitch on you. I didn't bring the videos or the things that you said to their attention for uh, retaliation or something on behest of King Payne or anybody else. It just naturally happened. And when I was questioned about it, somebody brought up the fact of, yo, ain't this the chick you mentioned before? And I said, yeah, but I had mentioned you in a good light. Pay attention. And so they got the correlation together, Jaguar, and they said, oh, my God, yo, what the fuck? And they were shocked. This is the truth. You better listen to me. This is true. I'm not lying to you. These other bloggers, they get on there and lie to you. I have no reason to lie to you. Actually, I'm doing you a, a service right now, okay? I'm doing you a service right now. Now, I done met a lot of Billy badasses in the world. You understand what I'm saying? But last time I checked, you got one gun. One gun. And you go to sleep. You go eat breakfast. You walk around. And um, that could be a problem for you. And I think the whole time that you were doing this whole charade to uh, become popular, not just take away from anything that you said, because some of the things that you probably said are have some significance to them and some validity to them. I will take that away from you. Some of the things you said, some of the things you said, but all in all, sweetheart, 
a lot of the shit that you said, as we say here in the New York City tri-state area, was fucking complete chuck, Jaguar, right? And um, I'm here on this very last time to offer you a, a bit of a silence for you to consider. Jag, if I were you, I wouldn't say any fucking thing else about anybody currently, previously, or potentially future being in the music business. I just wouldn't. I don't think it'll work out for you. I think you stand the possibility, and I'm not talking about mothers or nothing like that, but I think you will probably rank the possibility of being brought into a courtroom. And at that time, when you're brought in that courtroom, you know and I know just as well, because I need money now. You understand what I'm saying? I need money. And that's one of the problems and why I'm doing this podcast, too, because I have to rescind my advocacy for you. And this last bit of a gesture that I'm doing, and I'm going to get into why I'm rescinding my application for you. But um, before I do that, I want to offer you one last gift and one last part of consultation and counsel. Yeah. Remember, I'm professional. Yeah, my name's Davin Lewis, but I'm professional. Remember? That's how I'm known. And so, um, and like I said, this ain't no game. This ain't no game. I have to be very careful with my words. You um, have created an environment, an environment that's very dangerous for yourself and for your girlfriend. She doesn't know what's going on. She doesn't know this life that we've lived before. <laughs> she doesn't know anything about it. And a lot of people try to deduce my position as I was in the company or whatever the case may be. But make no mistake about it. I was around. Make no mistake about it. Everywhere that Puff went, Perez went, in every city, that all these guys went to, we were at. You understand what I'm saying? The events, the hotels, the, the, the performances, the, the concerts, everything. We were there. The accumulation from the beginning of Black... Well, I wasn't there for the beginning of Black Rob, but I was definitely there and part of the launch of Black Rob and promoting it. We used to run around, put up these orange stickers that said, whoa, you don't believe me? Go ask Gene Dill. He know. And Gene Dill, y'all take his word for everything. Gene Dill, you know, validate me. A couple other people, they'll validate me. You understand what I'm saying? I don't have no reason to lie. But if you really want to validate me, ask the big dogs. Ask Perez. Ask Malcolm Miles. Ask James Cruz. Ask Shan the Butcher, wherever he is. I haven't seen Shan in years. June Balloon. All those guys, they know who I am. We came up under them. We came up under their tutelage. Hey, yo, Playboy, get out of my cubicle. That was Shan. See, I come from a host of real ones. These are the guys that would have, you know, you know. So, um, I say this to you, Jaguar, right? And I hope you take consideration of this. Sweetheart, you're like me now. For the very moment, I'm normal. I don't have a lot of money like I used to. I used to have pockets full of money. I used to give money to people, take people and treat them for shit and everything else. Anybody knows me knows that. I used to have people fall asleep on them in, in, on my balcony in my condo, jump in the pool, everything else. You know, I make no mistake about it, you know, and I lived that way for quite a long while. And you lived that lifestyle for quite a while too, Jack. So you know what it's like. And now you have resorted, and the worst thing you could do as a former artist is resort yourself to now taking rags and tatters. You understand what I'm saying? Rags and tatters. Pay attention to me. You run around. And you don't have a permanent address right now. Many people that know my story here know I bent myself over backwards, getting myself back in the position. And y'all watch this here on my channel, so it's no lie. This is how I started my channel out, you know? Many of y'all remember my segment of Live from the Homeless Show, but that's what you mentioned before. My name has been associated with a lot of things. And at that time, people were saying you were living in your car with Goomba. How the fuck you got something to say about me? I caught that shit. But nevertheless, I never retaliated on this woman. Do you remember that? You sat for about a good three hours talking about me, dogging me out, saying all kinds of shit about me, doubting me or whatever, whatever. But if anybody knew, you knew. And the only thing you had to do was make one quick phone call. If any of those names I mentioned, they would have validated me. 
See, I'm different than these other guys. Choke no jokes, different than these other guys. The Star Report, Troy Terrain, he's different than these other guys. Big Face Gary, he's different than these other guys. Why? Because you can pick up the phone, you can validate us. We were there. Gene Dill, very easy. Pick up the phone. He was there. You understand what I'm saying? I've said this in Gene's chat room. Gene has spoken with me before. So make no mistake about it. You understand what I'm saying? This is the real deal. This ain't somebody just throwing up fallacies and, you know, pretending and shit. We are bad boy. You understand? And I'm not saying your problem's going to come from bad boy. But what I'm saying is you have said some very heinous things, sweetheart, and now they're out of my control. And I want you to know before I step off, I just wanted to offer my counsel to you as being professional. That's all. And I suggest to you, because it's not just bad boy entertainment and the person there that you ruffled some feathers with and couldn't believe was actually shocked at what you said. But there's a lot of other people that you said things about. They come and circle around that circle. Yeah, if you, yeah right. And, um, some of them feel a certain type of way too. And um, I just want my crowd to know, formally or currently, that um, based on the set of situations that I've heard that this seem really, and the words you guys use is messy. Messy, right. Based on what you guys have presented to me, I have to walk away now. So this will be my last time and final time talking about Jaguar Wright. And I'm not going to talk about her basher. No, sweet, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. But King Payne has a right to do that. He has a right to do that. See, you took money from that young man. You took money from him. You took money from multiple people that were part of his network. And that money could have went to him. That money could have went to others or whatever. Well, you set up a paradigm where you're taking money and just like a succubus, you were taking money from people and you're not being utterly aware and you're letting your greed take over. What happens is you set up a set of events where these good people that donate to us and keep our channels going and make no mistake about it. I've explained this a million times. I'd rather get paid by y'all than get paid by Google. I cannot go in front of Trump Tower and all these places and talk the shit that I talk in the same octave, same voice, the same way I do and talk against poor white trash without y'all support. And what you have done is based on what this woman explained today. And I was there and I listened to her voice two times. What you did was you went on your vlog later on and you called this woman stupid and dumb and silly and all this stuff. And you took that woman's money. That woman gave you some credit card information to get a car that didn't work out. They tried to help you. And I remember exactly what that woman said because she was very upset that she felt she had, had been duped by her thousand dollars, two thousand dollars, three thousand dollars. I never accumulate stuff too. I don't give a fuck if it was one dollar. It's mine. You cannot move forward doing that. Now, if you don't understand what I mean, if she gave you three thousand, she was probably prepared to give you up to seven to eight thousand. But your greedy notions and desperations made you go in or either the influence of that broad that you were around, who, in my opinion, is worse than Goomba was. You should have kept Goomba around. Goomba had your back, at least at that notion. He might have not been the best person. I don't know if he put his hands on you or whatever, whatever. But if I had to trade, I would say you should have kept Goomba behind you. I remember in one of your videos and I peeped something that you said because you said it the way we would say it here in the Northeast, right? And um, make no mistake about it, if you guys don't know the demographic over here, it goes Philly, then about 20 minutes after that is Delaware, then right after that is Jersey, and now you're in the New York City Tri-State. Jersey, New York, and then here where I live at, Connecticut. And I live at the closest tip going north, no, south into New York. So I know this area very well. I've lived in Harrisburg and Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania. My cousin Benji used to play the drum course down there, right by the Hershey Field down there. You know what I'm talking about. So uh, when I sit back and I think about this long trip that I've had supporting Jaguar, right? You can't make no mistake about that and deny that. Even when you were locked up, 
I could have took the high, I could have took the road and said, hey, we're going to talk crap about her now. But I myself, Ella King Payne, they did. When it was your birthday, you spent your birthday in, I believe that time it was a mental lockdown. They had to evaluate you, right? King Payne didn't even know it was your birthday. I let King Payne know it was your birthday. Now, if you don't believe me, go ask him one day. He'll tell you. But I doubt he won't talk to you now. But I let him know it was your birthday. Ain't you wondering how I knew it was your birthday? <laughs> so I've been very deeply invested in you as an artist, not an online YouTube personality, because I know what you're capable of. And maybe one day I'll be proven wrong and you'll come back and do this music that I know you can do or whatever the case may be. And you'll be somebody better. But the first you got to start within yourself, sweetheart. So you become a survival mechanism. And I know survival mechanisms because I went through hell during the pandemic. And since the pandemic has ended, I've been trying to reinstitute myself and get myself back financially. And when you pull moves like that, when a woman gives you $1,000, $2,000, $100 here, $3,000, whatever, whatever, but the base point, I believe, at least at 1000 When she does that, and she said, I was considering giving her more, but she jumped the gun and got greedy. I'm looking at you and I'm saying, baby girl, you went from being around millionaires to out here fighting for nickels and dimes and pennies. When the only thing you had to do was take you and them big ass mom hips and go work out for a minute, put down the Twinkies, walk instead of driving, walk instead of driving. And get yourself back to the same person. You, you basically look like the same person. As soon as you put them braids in your hands, like, yeah, that's her. You look like the same person you was when you was, let's say, 30, 35 years old. And instead, you opted to beef with YouTubers and take advantage of subscribers that belong to that man. That wasn't your subscribers. Those weren't your friends. They said out their mouth. And to have the audacity to hit this man up and be like, yo, there's some money missing. No, 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 no. That ain't Philly way. That ain't Philly way. Philly way come in. Well, maybe some part, maybe Germantown or something like that. Niggas down there, they do shit like that. But you, you should have walked your slow bucks ass back and said, yo, you know what? Thank God I'm on the concrete again. Thank God I'm on the concrete again. And it's because of this man. So even if there was $2, $3, $4 missing for whatever, and which I found out also, you got given another significant amount. But your tastes are still in line. And trust me, I know your taste is still in line from when we was in the music industry full throttle. Things have changed now. I'm getting more acceptance for being a singer than I ever was for being a rapper. And I can admit that. You understand what I'm saying? I get a far better reception. But what I'm doing is I'm working on reinventing myself by going to all these freaking open mics again and everything like that. It's very reiterated because I'm having kids that are 19, 20, 25 clapping for me, literally clapping for me. I will show y'all this week if y'all donate to the, the cash app and I'm going to show y'all. It costs money to be up in there. You know, you got to buy something for the ambiance. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Dollar sign S-T-R-I-N-G-E-R-B-E-L-L-8-0. Links in the description box. And I can show y'all. I've done it before. I've sung up on here on camera before. And people have heard me. And you heard the people in that in that video clapping for me. So make no mistake about it. I know you could have done the same thing. But nah, you want to be for fucking YouTubers. When you're bigger than that. You want to steal from people that are trying to fucking help you. And try to dupe them. And if you wasn't, that's how it appears. This is how people have received it. Don't you get it? Don't you get it? And they're angry. And so even on the stale front that if you had not made this move right here and you would have came out of this past situation and you would have said, take me to the studio. And I heard you got some management and all that shit, whatever. Man, them ragtag ass niggas can't do shit for you. Tell them I said it. And I dare you to say, come to me and tell me, oh, you're going to beat him up. I'm going to do that. You're going to be very fooled very quickly. You are out of your fucking league. 
If you ain't never believed nothing else, believe that. Yeah, I might not have people that are, you know, here go 10 grand, here go 20 grand, but I call two, three, five, I'll come to where you're at. All right? Wherever you're at, all across the country. I've been around the country 15 times over with Bad Boy Entertainment. Stayed in the best hotels you could think of, the W, Fountain Blue, all of them. They know us there. I've had friends that work there. I know the, the the freaking staff at some of these places. To this day, they're the same people. Brian, um, Mark, all these guys. I know these guys. Anybody that's down in Miami or Compound down in Atlanta, I know all these guys. R.I.P. to Alex. Those are the guys on Compound. His brother got killed down there. You know what I'm saying? Two Ethiopian brothers. So... You know what it is when you mess with us. It's a whole different flow. <laughs> Isn't it? So, sweetheart, right now that you're a one-man army, or well, maybe a two-man army with your girlfriend, and I'm not making fun of her. I just don't trust her. Let's just say that. She looks slick. She looks like a con artist. And she looks like she's kind of influencing you or motivating you for the moves that you're making right now. Because I can't think for one second in my mind, you being in the music industry, as long as you were, you know, you think the rules have changed. The rules ain't changed. The base rules ain't changed. The execution has changed. The base rules on how we conduct each other and how we move around with each other has not changed. And you know exactly what I'm talking about, Jaguar. So this is different than one of these vloggers talking to you. This is someone on the same elk as yourself. You understand? And I'm trying to tell you, was in the same position, same world, same environment. And to many of a court, I was around bigger people than you were assigned to. Is that fair? Because the person assigned you, who was Clive, we had direct contact with Clive because Clive was in the same building with us at 1540 Broadway. Y'all don't believe me? Go check your math on that. From 2000, what was it? From 2000, well, actually, he came, he bought his artist there in 97, 98, which included Luther Vandross, Whitney Houston. This is a story I tell y'all how I met Prince in the elevator. It was at that building. And Clyde was two floors above us. Andre Harrell was in the building with us or whatever, whatever, all that. So I was around Andre Harrell all the, for eon years, a decade and some more change. You talking to the real deal here. I'm not no liar. So when I when I when I um like I said I can be easily confirmed. No very easily confirmed. The people that you brought along as management, they should have known, they should have stopped you and said, hey, listen, this is terrible PR right now. That's why I said them niggas don't know what they're talking about. And whoever you fucking with, it can't be that much of a deal because you're not paying them. You don't have a budget right now. If you had a budget, you wouldn't be taking a thousand dollars from old women. That woman said she was 55 years old and gave you that money. She said, I'm retired. Now, you can fool them. You can't fool me. You know that. You know you can't fool me. I come from this. I'm still involved in this. I'm still around a lot of the heads that you're talking about. So you can believe me. You don't. You want to tune out. You can tune out. I don't give a shit. This is not for y'all. <laughs> this is for her. Because <laughs> I know she's going to see it. So if you don't want to be here, if I bore you or whatever... I like a lot of you weirdos that come here every day and watch me, but don't donate a dime, don't engage in the conversation or whatever. Just sit back and just like, like a bunch of fucking weirdo voyeur motherfuckers. You understand? And hopefully sooner or later, YouTube is going to change that where this little emblem where you see how the person and the amount of people in here is going to change to a structure where you start seeing names right there. When you start seeing names, such and such just entered the chat. Such and such just entered the chat. You don't believe me? You'll see in a few minutes. <laughs> so, like I said, Shug. I can't even call you Shug anymore. But um, I wish you good luck. I wish you good luck. I hope you find silence in your life. I hope that you have the best that life has to offer. And what I also hope is, and to all you bloggers out there, please go tell her. And I'm going to tell you bloggers too. Um, you're putting yourself in danger right now. Fucking with her. I'm going to say it for you one more time. And you can quote me on this. My name's Davin Lewis. 
My nickname is Professional. I'm very known in the music industry. This is not a joke. I have tons of friends from different record labels, different positions, all the way down to fucking street team, all the way up to the executives. You understand what I'm saying? So, and these are long standing relationships. I've recorded at Quad. I've recorded at Daddy's House Recording Studio. I've recorded at Electric Lady. I have projects that I'm putting out. I am not an unaccomplished man by any means. You understand what I'm saying? What you see right now, what you project and presume is something else. I don't care. But my resume says something totally different. I'm not talking about a resume like the streets either. I'm talking about a resume on paper. What it says on my LinkedIn. I was there at the beginning of the, the launch of Revolt TV, as you can see by the picture that brought you in here. I was there for the launch of Ciroc Alcohol, what was this is called Blue Dot. I was the first person that handed these out along with the team that I that I was with. You understand what I'm saying? And my comrades, shout out to all of them, Chrome, Uptown, Rod Dollars Live, Jaque, formerly of Love and Hip Hop. We the real deal. You understand what I'm saying? So, um, uh, she knows what I mean, and that's all that matters. But if I were you and I were a blogger, let me give you a little piece of advice. If she comes on your vlogs and she starts talking about anything outside of her and she starts gossiping or whatever, whatever, outside of herself, and this includes them two little boys down there in Philly that y'all think y'all anonymous. We know who you are, too. And I told everybody to back up off of you because you guys talk a little too fucking much. And you, I think you guys think you're a little tough because of the people you know. Well, that could be taken care of very easily. Yeah. Ten guys, tops. I don't want to do that. I don't want anybody to have to do that to you. But I'm telling these guys, this old gossiping thing, you got to watch who you gossip about. Because a lot of times you gossip about people and you don't have the same amount of money as they do at their disposal. That means disposable income for those that are laymen. Yeah, you get your hurt. What would you do if your top max is you got, let's say, $20,000 versus somebody that's got a reach of, I don't know, $1 billion? <laughs> you know what type of freaking headers I can pay for $1 billion? How you come in there and get them to do the whole fucking house and you <laughs> watch you watch and hold you down while you watch? You understand? So um, I would say to a lot of you vloggers, I know you want your views. I know you want your likes. But them views and them lights going to get you in a position that you can't afford to fucking be in, all right? And you ain't going to go on enough donations from these motherfuckers to save you. And the best thing I can tell you is, is this. There was this young girl that committed suicide. She was a TikToker. Let me go look the story up. And this young girl, she was around about 19 years old when she committed suicide or whatever the case may be. Beautiful Latina girl. And um, she had over 1.2 million followers. When they had her funeral possession for session, you know how many people showed up? 30. 30 people out of 1.2 million. These subscribers, they know most of them, the majority of them. I'll say 70% of them don't give a flying fuck about you. They don't give a flying fuck about your programming. As quick as they scroll through fucking YouTube, they can go somewhere else. I've got videos that got 1.2 million views. I've got videos that got 200,000 views with just me in it. Just me alone. You understand? I'll share it for you if you want me to. I've got I've gone viral now six times. <laughs> six times. Jaguar's going viral about the same amount. That's anything over 50,000 views. Considerably, that's what they position it as. Anything that goes under over 50,000 views can be considered for greater media. Meaning your news outlets, meaning... NBC, whatever the case may be. If you don't need, you need an example of that. Carly Russell, that's where she started at. And then major media picked it up. So, to you vloggers, and you champs of fucking the truth. <laughs> Remember what I tell y'all. Watch motherfuckers say that shit. She telling the truth. <laughs> he telling the truth. But that truth is going to get your fucking tooth knock the fuck out if you keep fucking around and i think that's the problem none of y'all put your hand you know it used to be a time you sit around and this is what this internet shit has provided is provided motherfuckers or otherwise cowards would be able to sit in the house and talk about whatever the fuck they want to talk about talk whoever they want to talk about without any repercussions right and that's cute 
if you're 16, 17 years old, you know, what's the most going to come out of? Well, a lot of times you just get dropped still, you know, depending on what city you're in. You're in New York, that might drop you. But um, let me tell you something. When you're joining in with these guests or these people you think got the exposure coming around and all that shit or whatever, ask yourself this. Do you think what you're talking about in your little ragtag ass podcast has got 100,000 followers or whatever the case may be, right? At minimum. Do you think that the motherfuckers you're talking to or what you got to say are going to have that much of an impact that you're going to shut down the fucking industry? Let me give you an example. Howard Stern used to talk shit about the industry all the time. They threw his ass the fuck out. You understand what I'm saying? He's a white Jewish guy. He threw his ass the fuck out. And everybody, a lot of people don't talk about that part about her, Howard Stern. Howard Stern got forced out the industry. Glenn Beck got forced out the industry. Now, these are people that are reputably white or whatever the case may be, and they'll never be able to return. They have to work on their own. This is why I'm telling you, Jack. Well, any project you throw out from this point on, no record label is going to fuck with you. You're going to have to throw it out independently. And by the looks of it right now, and the direction that your so-called management is taking you. I don't know what kind of fucking management that is. Because I have somebody that I'm working with at a local studio in New York right now. And I've let you guys know a million times. You know what I'm saying? And uh, they would never give me any advice like that. They would tell me quite the opposite. They would tell me, yo, you need to take your ass to fuck off a lot. You fucking up the potential money and trajectory. All you vloggers. And I'm not just talking about Jaguar right. I'm just talking about in general. A lot of you vloggers that are sitting around and you're siding with these people to come on your podcast, and I'm talking about certain individuals, you know, the art of dialogue, them softest fucking baby ass motherfuckers of comedy hype, and a lot of these other fuckers. You have to be of a certain elk to talk about these stars. See, and a lot of people be like, well, Corey Holcomb talks about stuff. Corey Holcomb's different. Corey Holcomb's respected. Corey Holcomb's from Chicago. Corey Holcomb. It's got what you call gumption. It's very different. And he's an OG. So it's very different. Very, 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 very different. When you talk shit and people recognize it for being the truth versus he telling the truth. So let me tell y'all something. Be weary of these motherfuckers. And listen to me very well, kids. Be weary of these motherfuckers that jump online and they got this little banner. He telling the truth. Or this is the other title. Such and such this opened the industry up. Shocked the industry. And I can't believe you dumb motherfuckers are believing this shit. You're the dupes. You all as well be in little fucking cells and little capsules like they are in the movie The Matrix. And you remember when Neo woke up and he looked at all the the, the, the little capsules around him that were encased with people that were in a state of style, uh, of, 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 what do you call that shit? A state of unconsciousness or whatever the case may be. I can't think of the word right now. That's how y'all are. That's how you are. And that's who you become. You become no more than pawns in a bigger fucking checker game. Or ch it's not even chess, it's checkers. You just jump over top of each other. <laughs> There's no real method behind it. There's no real anything behind it. These vloggers. And you are the ones that know when Jaguar comes on your programs a lot of time, y'all sit there and you motherfuckers do your best to amp her up, knowing her condition, knowing how she is, knowing what she'll do. And y'all encourage her. And what y'all really doing is lining her up to get into more fucking trouble. You should be ashamed of yourself for that. You're taking advantage of her for fucking views, donations, and fucking hopes to subscribe. A lot of y'all built your whole fucking channels off that woman. But it would be the same ones in the chat room talking about, well, she's got a mental problem. No, you have a mental problem. You have a mental problem. Because only a mentally ill motherfucker would go and have the fucking goal to sit there and create a whole channel off a woman that you say and consistently provide material on that one woman. You understand what I'm saying? And, and feel comfortable with that. Like my whole channel's about Jaguar writing her downfall. Really? You a sick motherfucker. There's a lot of people that are doing the same thing with King Payne now. They're taking his material, clipping it, shopping it up or whatever, whatever. I do it every day. I know what y'all doing. And they'll build their whole channel based on what he said about Jaguar back and forth. This channel's being started because of their beef. Y'all are some insidious motherfuckers. 
and you become the same animals that you say that you hate in white culture. The same animals that you say that you hate, that oppress. You have not looked around. All this fake love shit that y'all speak of. Yeah, that's what it is. Fake love. Fake love. Y'all show Jaguar. Fake love. And myself, King Payne, and a few others have tried to express that to her. The love that these people are showing you is fake love. And as much as you think you using them, they benefit more off of you. Have you seen that by the retention and the numbers that you get? Even when you had your own channel, Jaguar, you would see at the minimum 10,000, 15,000 views by the people that are throwing up your imagery, throwing up what happened with you, are seeing 100,000, 200,000, 300,000. Why? Because they're waiting for your impending demise. Wake up, sis. Wake up. And I've tried to tell you this before. Be yourself again. Be yourself. The reason, and you ain't write all those songs. Some of them were co-written. Some of them were, you know, trash rewritten, whatever the case may be. But the reason you had that catalog is because you had a beautiful soul at one time. The reason you did the genre of music you did, which was Neo Soul, was all about from Kindred to, 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 to Jill, to, to, to the Bahamadias, all those people that come out of that era that you come out of. The reason those people shine so much is because they had love in their heart. Quest Love to this day still got love in his heart. You see what I'm saying? And these are the people that would have helped you come back. And now you're stuck because you spent a lot of your time on your comeback talking about these people. They can't stand to be around you now. There's nothing you could possibly do to apologize to them anymore. That's out the window because everybody saw you get arrested multiple times. And then when you come home, even after I said it, King Payne said it, many other vloggers said it, Yo, excuse my French. Bitch, don't come home doing the same shit. Come home and do the music. And maybe that's the problem. You ain't got no real men around you to tell you, listen, bitch, I love you. Shut the fuck up and do the music. You got a whole bunch of yes men around you. And you know as well as I know, Jaguar, the worst thing you could do is have a fucking bunch of yes men around you as your entourage, right? Who gives a fuck if you don't like what I said? Those two people are just like, oh my God, he said, bitch, get the fuck out of here and unsubscribe. This ain't for you. You know exactly what the fuck I'm talking about. Clive got fucking, fucking bought in on charges when he was at CBS Records back in the 60s for the same shit. Yes, I'm talking about Clive Davis. You don't believe me? Go look up the story. Clive Davis was bringing his artists drugs and paybacks and kicks and alcohol and all kinds of shit. CBS was going to find him at first. He got arrested for the shit, went to trial for the shit, and CBS ended up hiring him back. He was young, okay? Not talk shit about you, Clyde. We love you. But point remains. You understand what I'm saying? The point remains. A bad entourage of motherfuckers around you. This is for any artist here back in the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, 2000s, 2000s and teens. To the 2020s that we're in right now, that has always been condensed of the same fucking ending. You got bad management. Get rid of them motherfuckers. If none of them motherfuckers can come in here and tell you, hey, 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 look, chick, you need to shut the fuck up now. They can't do that with you. You need to get rid of them. If you remember, I'm going to throw this up later on. I'm not going to tell you exactly what it's about, but I told Skinny the same thing the other day. Maybe about two weeks ago. I said, Skinny, get that Koresha bitch away from me. She ain't no good. Now, in one week, this bitch got two people pointing at her. Her baby daddy and some other side nigga. Can't make this up. You understand what I'm saying? And this comes after what I said, what I said. And Skinny, I know you're probably watching me too. I, this, all right, let me handle it. Now, Jag, you fucked this one up. That's on you. That's on you. That's on you. And uh, preferably, I hope that you don't. I hope that you get some new people around you 
that chick that you got around you. I'm going to say the same way I said to Skinny. Get that bitch the fuck on. You did the same thing, and I peeped when you said that slick shit in the house. When you said, yeah, we need to end that story. When you were talking about Legina. Unless you're from this area, you wouldn't pick that shit up. That was really some shit they do in Brooklyn, too. A lot of shit that Brooklyn people do and Philly do is very similar. Very similar. Very similar. They may have a slightly different accent, but their movements are very similar. And so I know when I see it. And lived in Pennsylvania for, not Philly, my grandfather's from Philly. You know what I'm saying? And that's why I mentioned Germantown, because that's the area. Well, it wasn't that then, but that's the area it's known as now. My grandfather's from there. Robert Lewis, some of the family still there and all throughout Pennsylvania. So um, I'll say like this to you, Jaguar, right? And I hope you paid attention to this. And I hope you hear this. And I hope whoever's on here, hiding in the bushes and in the shadows, because that's what y'all do best. But y'all ain't going to be able to do that much longer. Oh, boy, they're already exposing you. My wishes have been met. I'm going to put up something in the community section. I'm going to prove to y'all that I know who many of y'all motherfuckers are. You think I can't see you. I proved to you in a post down below if many people believe it or not. And I showed the names. I literally have your names in alphabetical order who every last one of y'all is following me or comes and newly subscribes and shit. So maybe YouTube is listening to me. Thank you, Leo. Thank you, Tuma. That <laughs> was in the last update. So I now can see you. And I'll be able to see you even more. Because you see how you see that little emblem right there that's a person? Pretty soon, as soon as you come into this fucking chat room, I'm going to see your name pop up. I'm going to see your name pop up. That's going to be the next update or update after next or maybe the update after that. Depends how quick you can write the code for it. But I'm going to be able to see y'all pretty soon. And so this whole little profession that you motherfuckers have for hiding behind the scenes and act like you don't know what's going on and trying to get some material for your own blog because let's just be honest here none of you want to be subscribers anymore all you want to be bloggers i could do it better than him you can't do it better than me you didn't have the same experiences as me anything that you say up against me as far as the music business is concerned is fraudulent and anybody that supports you they fraudulent over me and if you guys would like to support me, make sure you hit that like button right now. Make sure you hit the cash app, dollar sign, S-T-R-I-N-G-E-R-B-E-L-L-H-0. The link is in the description box. You can also find a PayPal link there if you don't have cash app. If you appreciate me. Because see, my cash app slowed down when I was defending. And to that one motherfucker that is long off, I hope you're going to throw some money in the cash app. I would appreciate it. But my money got fucked up. And I noticed it when I was on here defending Jaguar, right? That's why I'm on here talking the shit that I am fucking right now. If you talk against me, you fucking wrong as chick. You wrong as fuck. Don't talk against me because I had your back. You made the decision you wanted to make. And that's why you need more men like me around you. The men that you have around you, I don't give a fuck how strong they try to pretend they are, whatever, whatever, whatever. And I ain't got to say no certain names. The men are weak. I can tell they're weak. Because they won't tell you what you need to be told. Which is you need to sit your motherfucking ass down for six months and write some fucking songs. Act like you got some fucking sense. And stop arguing with motherfucking YouTubers when you're bigger than that. And these fuckers won't tell you. Because they're scared of you. What you scared of her for? It's a woman. What you scared of her for? Tell her the truth. The shit you're doing is fucking stupid. And it's led up to this stupid point. You think you're winning right now? That lady today, she said, that's the last thousand dollars she ever get from me. And I am not worried about it. I hope that lady donates a thousand dollars to me or King Payne or split it in half. <laughs> shit, I can use that. You know what I'm saying? You know how much rent is nowadays? That's going to come back up around in a minute, you know? And while you're sitting there taking that money and instead getting $175 a night hotel rooms, $175, at least get part of a rewards program. Come on, you the tall all around the country. You know the fucking rewards program. That's a necessity. I don't know too many people in the motherfucking music industry that don't have a rewards program, a fucking dude. That means you can stay at any hotel and within that branch. Wyndham is one of them. They do it. Wyndham owns everything from the Super 8 all the way down to Wyndham, um, Wyndham Suites. I'm part of that shit. I ain't paid my dues in a while. 
<laughs> but I, I'm part of that shit. I can show you the brochure, show you my card, all that shit. You know what I'm saying? Win the rewards program. Oh, I just know that shit. Saves you tons of money. You know how much money you blow in fucking hotel rooms? Come on, man. Come on. So if none of them punk ass motherfuckers you got right now, I mean that respectfully. Because I don't know everybody around you personally. But I do know one thing. Them motherfuckers ain't telling you what you need to know. So I'm going to tell you what you need to know. And to sabe, mami, ta ana negra. Cámate. Cámate con su boca. Cámate ya. Porque en tu sabe, no momento, la muerte. Eh? En la amiga contigo. Claro. Claro en la mente. You understand Spanish, motherfucker. You know exactly what the fuck I just said. So listen to me. Listen well. Stop talking about people online. And that's all I have to say. And um, I wish you the best. This will be my last interaction with you or even speaking about you. And for the people that follow me, um, I want to say, and to a couple of vloggers, I want to say I apologize to you, particularly one female vlogger that I went real head to head with. I was like, bitch, you better stop talking about her, whatever, whatever. And then I listened to a couple of videos and I said, well, damn, it's condensing of what's happening right now. So what do I say? So to that one female vlog, I apologize to you from the bottom of my heart. I will leave you a message to let you know that I sincerely mean that. And I hope that you see it. And there's one other male vlogger. I'm going to apologize to him. You understand? Because they deserve that. Hey, Adrian Rivers, how you doing? And in the time being, guys, make sure you hit up Cash App, dollar sign, S-T-R-I-N-G-E-R-B-E-L-L-8-0. And let me say this. I don't do the people that donate to me. I don't get over on the people that donate to me. In fact, I do something totally different. If you've been at this channel, I do a, I have a history of this. The only thing you have to do is go through my shorts more preferably, okay? Because that's usually where I put them. And you'll go through there and you'll see multiple posts of every time that somebody donates to me, I show them what I do with my money. And that's what you guys have to do as donators. Don't let this thing that's going on right now persuade you not to donate to people, not to contribute to people, or whatever the case may be, because there's some good goddamn people out here on the internet. The problem is, is y'all, and the way that you have been coined to start thinking as if you're within this bubble within the matrix, and what you guys have got to start doing is you absolutely have to stop following anybody that's fucking gossiping every fucking day. You understand what I'm saying? Now, there's certain people that are meant for the gossip trail. Don't get me wrong, okay? But start paying attention to people that, so, you know, one thing that King Payne said today, he said, I talk about God all the time. I do too on my posts. I told people how there is over, and I believe if I'm right, there was over 128 different passages in the Bible talking against gossiping. So the tenets itself in the Bible say such, and the passages in the Bible say such. You are going against God, Jaguar. That's why you can't get blessed properly. And a lot of people, they do that. They only call on God, as Craig Smith would say. Shout out to Craig Smith. God. They call on God when they're having a hard time. Lord, help me. I feel sick. God, help me. Something happened to my child. God help me my grandmother is passing God help me this much this much this much you call on God when you're having a hard time but you never call on God when everything's good you understand what I'm saying and I'm telling you guys the key and the new plantation the new tool of which I formerly knew and this is the best way I thought about it today so I could present it to you the new Willie Lynch letter is this shit right here and how you utilize it and most of you guys are utilizing it only to bash your own, only to argue with your own, only to compete with your own, only to financially shame your own. And worse enough, a lot of you motherfuckers are clicking up and getting together and telling people, don't donate to them. Don't go to their page. Like a bunch of bitches laying under the fucking hot hair dryer with pink rollers in your hair. And I'm talking specifically to the men, not the women. The men, because some of you men are some of the biggest bitches. You in them, that bitch that raised you two trifling assholes. You understand what I'm saying? 
two trifling assholes. You and that single bitch that raised you. Nobody liked her anyway. Please don't call cuss. I'm family friendly. Oh, I always cuss here, Andrew and Rebellion. I always curse here, but I, I keep it toned. But I had to say it that way. But yeah, I curse. I curse. And if I was outside, I smoke cigarettes. That's just me. I'm a Northeast boy. That's how I do. <laughs> I'm from here in the Connecticut shoreline slash down south. This is who I am. You understand what I'm saying? And this is what I mean. Being the real, being the, yeah, I, I announce it all the time. But for you, yeah, I will. Because you're being very friendly and respectful. So for you, I will. But this is who I am. So if you ever tune into me again and you catch me out in, in, in Times Square or wherever the hell else I'll be, I'll be a lot of different places. Please remember, I curse a lot. So don't have your kids around. <laughs> you know what I mean? But uh, peace to the babies. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to curse the babies in the room. But, um, that's what it is. So I wish the best of Jaguar, right? Um, do I think she'll be back as far as musically? I uh, highly doubt it. You got the wrong people around you. The people around you are allowing you to do whatever the fuck you want to and not giving you, excuse me, not giving you counsel on what you should be doing. And what you should be doing is presenting good music to the people. Especially, you should have been writing songs while you was locked up. Tupac wrote three albums when he was locked up. Huh? Bobby Smurda and fucking what's the name came out of jail, had all kinds of songs ready. Every artist has ever went to jail. Um, who else? Who's who another one? Um, he had one of his best albums. Hank Williams Jr., he went to jail. Came out with one of the best country albums ever. And you wasted your time blogging <laughs> and talking crap about your accolade and people that are around you. You are no longer one of us no more. I'm still one of us. You're not. You know what I mean by that? Meaning that I can walk up into an office. Before I got on here, I was on the phone with somebody that's pretty prevalent in the music industry. And I had a nice little 45 minute conversation with that person. Kept it mostly regular, but they were inquiring, asking questions for a reason. And I know how this person asks questions. He asks questions in a very friendly way, you know? No. Though she will never be back. She's too busy keeping up mess on Facebook. Oh, she's on Facebook. I got you. Share the gospel to everyone. Jesus is my savior and everyone wants a... I grew up around... I grew up... Let me tell y'all something. So a lot of y'all don't know this. I was born in the South, okay? I was born in the South. My mother's a Northerner. Her, grand, her father, which is my grandfather, was a Northerner. And his wife, which is my grandmother, she was a Southern woman, Okay? So that's where that connection come from. So I had uncles and aunts. They were more primar primarily in Jersey, okay? And so then they moved their way into Queens and then some into the Bronx, stuff like that. But primarily in Jersey, this is where they started at his, his end of the family, my grandfather and all my cousins and everything like that. And you guys heard me mention, I used to stay, literally stay. I stayed there for like a year in Mechanicsburg and Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. And I used to shoot up to Germantown and we go up there and see my my um my third cousins and stuff like that or whatever. They still there. You know what I'm saying? And they some nuts. Like, trust me. They ride the scepter. I think that's what they call it out there. The train or whatever, 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 all that, you know. And so um, I'm familiar with Pennsylvania quite well. My cousin Benji used to play the quad drums and the drum corps out there. They had a little um band thing or whatever, whatever. What up, King Payne? Please go back and watch the beginning of this dog. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Adrian Rivera, appreciate you tuning in. Um, I'm very familiar with that Pennsylvania area or whatever the case may be, but um, when you got the wrong direction behind you and your only direction is malice and talking about people and disrespecting people and this being this, this god wittenly this fucking evil, excuse my French, the problem is you get then is this. You get the karma that comes along with that type of energy. So if you're a nasty person all the time, if you if you if you always have malice in your heart or taking advantage, like you took advantage of that poor woman that gave you a thousand dollars and then some more after that. And the kitchen king pain is right here. You know, I didn't want to patamine his words. That's why I didn't say too much of what's going on. And King Payne, go back and watch this. You'll see what I'm talking about. I, I wanted to make sure I gave my own interpretation of this because this is the interpretation she'll understand. See, it's deeper than this, this YouTube thing now. She's gotten herself into a bigger pickle. 
because now there's other people that are interested in what the fuck you've been saying. <laughs> and they're asking me, and I'm like, well, why are you asking me for? Well, you the YouTube nigga. That's what they say to me. So, you know, I, I'm trying everything I can but to snitch on this woman or point somebody in direct, because that's just not my character. You know, I don't snitch on people. If I got a disagreement with you, 90% of the time I just step off. You know what I'm saying? I don't really do any of that. But she's a phenomenal artist. And to see her take this direction and be like, all right, I'm going to trash my career away and, I, and fuck the music. You know what I'm saying? I had a song I just released and it's still in the description box right now. Now, the link is fucked up because it's online instead of being an app. But they're supposed to be changing that. And I'm going to fix that for you. But I've been pumping that song thinking, I don't know, maybe a month and a half. You know, I, and I, I might just, just put the whole joint up or whatever, whatever. And I'm going to share a video, some video that I had of a video I did before. But my point is, is this, man. This is a woman that is highly intelligent, but at the same time, highly manipulative. And manipulative in an insidious form. And I don't know what kind of demon or devil then got up into you. But you need to get rid of that motherfucker. Because a lot of people got demons and devils in them on here. And they sit back. And they'll talk about, oh, God got me. God going to save me. God love me. God don't fuck with you. And I've said that before, and I'll say it again, because I grew up in the church. I literally did. I grew up in the church. I was like 9, 10 years old. I mean, we went to fucking Sunday, Sunday school, uh, vacation Bible school. <laughs> we went to choir rehearsal on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday with my grandmother. Like, we was in there because my grandmother used to watch us when my mother was going to school to become, in her practice, my mother's a practitioner. And so my father, he would work long hours because he did construction and shit like that. He ran his own little construction business. He never hired no more than like six or seven people. So he wasn't huge, but he had his own thing going on. So that's why I have a knack. Y'all seen me on camera before when I'm fixing things or things like that to the best of my ability because of my dad. And so when I hear people turn around and they say, God got me after they said some insidious, nasty shit, that's always my response. No, he don't. And I don't know Jesus, I don't know God, I don't know any of the 12 disciples, but I know what's written in those Bible passages. And this is what I was talking about to you before, I was talking to you guys about before. There's over 128 motherfucking references speaking against gossiping in the Bible. And for some reason or another, a lot of you are taking the, the road of, I'm just going to gossip to create my channel. And you pat them on and clip and build your channels around people like King Payne and more famously, freaking Jaguar. And then somehow or another, you come to the conclusion that God got your back. No, God don't fuck with you or fuck with people like that. It goes against everything that's written in the Bible. You understand? When you come with malice, when you come with, 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 with deception, when you come with manipulation, and then you call on God after, you're not a righteous person. You're a demon. And they've got a demon controlling you. And I think there's a demon somewhere or another, whether it be from our industry, whether it be from someone she's been around. But you can quite clearly see this is not the same woman from 10 years ago even. This is somebody different. And a lot of different situations happen like that. For all we know, some people in her family made her like that. But I don't care anymore. I don't. Because if I side myself with what the shit she's doing, then that make me and anybody that's been in the business I've been in look the exact same way. I've lost people that used to come here and regularly donate to me that don't even donate to me no more. I've lost money off defending this lady. Don't you say shit to me because I need every dime I could get right now. Y'all don't even know how much I'm behind on bills and shit like that fucking with my subscribers. And they got mad at me because I was defending her. You understand what I'm saying? Oh, don't just give her another chance. Sing her butt off, great boys. Yeah, she did Chosen One. And she chose Chosen One to take a different route. But she know the motherfucking setback. 
You got arrested when you went in there and wilded out in the police station. All the police surrounded you. That was one time. Then you had another time. You went down bitching and yelling and screaming or whatever, whatever, acting erratic. They scooped you up again. Now here you are. They scooped you up again. And when this man comes, get you cane pain or whatever, and throws his neck out to help you out. You scream at him and talk about, where are my other couple of thousand of dollars? When one of his subscribers and gave you almost up to $3,000 or the hardcore, she says, at the very least, I believe she gave you $1,000. At the very least. Even if she was exaggerating, I believe she at least gave you $1,000. But you want to go pop Willie like we used to be. Let me go get the $175 room. You better take your motherfucking ass down there to the such and such end. Huh? <laughs> you better take your ass down there to Motel Shicks and ask them they got a weekly rate. Huh? Most of those most of out there where you at, you get a weekly rate on a hotel room. Listen, she out there in where? Louisiana or Texas? Either one of them. I've been to both of them. We went to the SMB, uh, Essence Awards out of Louisiana. We then went to the, uh, the, the Whistle Made, the Super Bowl and all that down in Texas. All of them, they got executive rooms, they got corporate hotels, corporate rooms, same thing in Atlanta. You can rent these motherfuckers for like $225 a week, $175 a week, or whatever, whatever. Now, you want to stay up in the mirror right? with the pool and everything like that. We ain't living like that no more. And if you want to live like that again, then you don't do it by duping people and taking fucking donations from them and fucking up. The, you fucking up the game, shorty. And to be from Philly and Jersey, you should know. If you was on the block with this, niggas would have came at you. You over here selling fronts. <laughs> you hear that? You over here selling fronts. You fucking up the game right now. You got to go. That's what they would have did to you in Philly. In Philly, they would have put you in the trunk somewhere. They'd... Come on. Like, let's be honest here. You understand? So you ain't even playing by the rules of the streets right now. Shug, Jag, Jaguar, Jacqueline. You ain't playing by the rules of the streets right now, very well playing by the rules of a regular person. And we were all empathetic for you. That's what pisses me off, because I roll with you. So don't tell me I can't say what the fuck. I say I lost money fucking with you. You understand what I'm saying? I lost money fucking with her. Supporting her and everything else. So I don't feel that shit. And I don't feel the fellowship even more, regardless of how you felt. So if if let's just say King Payne did keep a thousand dollars, let's just say he did, right? Let's say he kept two thousand dollars. What the fuck you got to say about it? Ain't you out of jail? You got to be out of jail to even complain about it or contest it, right? Huh? Huh? So if a motherfucker came and bought you out of jail, yeah. If a motherfucker came and bonded you out of jail and they spent almost $2,200, $2,400 with all the added taxes and everything like that, right? We did the breakdown of it or whatever the case may be. You was lucky to have $50 left. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? So I, I don't understand where you coming from. And then you got this poor woman that gave you money and she's validating that she gave you money. And I have no reason not to believe. I listened to two recordings of it. That was there the whole time. Huh? You sound like a fucking crook, Jaguar. All right? You sound like a crook. You sound like a crook. You sound like a thief. And I don't rock with people like that. And I know people in Philly. I got family in Pennsylvania. And they don't rock like that. So it's sad to say, and I know you're saying to yourself right now when you see this or when you hear this, what are you going to do? Oh, there's a whole bunch I can fucking do. I could really fuck you over if I wanted to. Because if anybody knows this shit in debt, it's me. I was there three years ago with you on this shit, remember? Huh? And you and I have actually talked before. One-on-one. -on -one. I ain't making that up. We've talked before. And it wasn't fucking friendly. Remember? All right. So um, I just want to say to Jaguar, right? I hope that you somehow or another segue and change your life. I hope some way or another you get these fraudulent ass people that are around you that are influenced you to do this shit or whatever because you have since apologized or what the lady described as you apologized to King Payne and said, no, I don't think he had nothing to do with it too fucking late. Because your bitch did. Your bitch did. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? And I don't know why you got that nasty looking bitch around you anyway. That bitch don't look like shit. If you're going to get a girl, at least get someone to get a girl that, that is at your elk that you can walk into a room. You understand what I'm saying? That bitch look rough.
I think she even get fixed up. She look rough. You understand what I'm saying? Like, okay, let me just say this. There's a team of collected individuals known as the unfuckables. <laughs> the unfuckables. <laughs> That's what y'all look like right now. The unfuckables. This is out here talking about you wearing the same dress for four, five days or whatever. What's going on, Shug? And you got a thousand, you got a G plus in your pocket, you wearing the same dress for days? This ain't you. And that's how I know something's wrong. And I know it's under the influence of that chick you're around because everybody keep resonating saying the same thing. Shake that bitch. Yeah? Feel me? Shake that bitch. And that's all I could do is give counsel. I can't be aligned with you anymore. I can't defend you anymore. I can't say, well, let's get Jaguar Chance anymore. I got to walk away now. And I'm walking away friendly. And you've been a, I hate to say it, Defending you has been at my demise. Guys, make sure y'all hit the like button. Make sure you hit the cash app right now. Support this channel. Dollar sign S-T-R-I-N-G-E-R-B-E-L-L-8-0. And I want to put on record, at this time, I'm rescinding my support of Jaguar right from this point on. Even if you show something different and you come out with a number one single tomorrow and you're back on Billboard under Clive, because you know Clive, well, you know what I mean. <laughs> you got to pay for that information. <laughs> but I, I know a whole bunch of stuff that I just don't talk about over here because I'm like, fuck, I'm going to get this shit out for free for. I took me years to learn this shit. You know what I'm saying? I'm giving it to you for free? Fuck out of here. I give it to certain people for free. You understand? But um, I need all y'all financial support. I've had like two and a half weeks of me blocking and nobody except for one person, which is Miss Foster out in Chicago, has donated $25 to me. Not because I'm what I'm saying is not real. No, they're not donating because I took up for her. And I noticed it from that point when I did that one blog or whatever. And to those two bloggers in particular, I'm pretty sure you come check me out because I've never blocked you. I've never nothing. I know a lot of y'all sitting in the bushes right now, not commenting, not hitting the like button or whatever the case may be, just seeing if I'm going to say something insidious about Jag. Nah, I'll tell you what the real I'm going to say about Jag. First things first. First of all, get that ragtag-ass motherfucking so-called management away from you because they ain't doing shit for you. Because you know if that's management was something from Clyde, BMG, or, or Arista, the first thing that would happen is they'd be like, yo, why the fuck do you have them around? What do they do? That's the first question they would ask. And if they didn't meet the marker, he would tell you to get the fuck rid of them. You know, that's what Clyde would say to you, and I know it. Okay, so let's, don't, let's have no description about that. Second thing is, get that motherfucking raggedy-ass fucking bitch that look like the predator <laughs> away from you. You understand what I'm saying? Because she's no good. She just sets you up. Oh, I think King Payne did it. <laughs> bitch, you new to the game. No, none of us know you. And I think you attaching yourself to Jaguar because you're looking for the hype. And don't tell me that that chick is mean in the world to you, Jag, because that bitch is ugly as fuck. Predator. <laughs> the Unfuckables. A team of a collegiate individuals. And I'm playing. But like I said, man, get that broad away from you, Jag. That bitch is no good. And then the third thing is you need to make things right with your people, your direct people. And then the fourth thing is you need to sit down with, and I hate to say this because I'm not the motherfucker to say this and I'm not trying to give you a psycho evaluation over the internet, but for what we can see, you need to take a clear fucking year off and do nothing but write music and go to some type of therapy so you can talk to somebody. I ain't saying you got to take some pills. I'm not trying to say you got to put yourself under psychosis and then and that's silly extreme shit, all right? But I think you do need to talk to somebody that's neutral, neutral. You understand? Somebody that's not aware of who you are or who you used to be. Someone that doesn't know anything about the tides of your music business career. No one that knows you used to have a Coca-Cola commercial. Nobody that knows who you are on the internet or anything like that. You just need to talk to somebody that's neutral. And I think you need to stay and stick and talk to them. And get the, the predator away from you. <laughs> Other than that, guys, I will talk to y'all later. Make sure y'all go check out the official King Payne. King Payne, thank you for checking in. And I also want to thank you, man, because you put me on to a whole bunch of things today. You was right what you said in your shit. You know what I'm saying? I ain't going to front. I'm, I'm a Taurus, B. You understand what I mean? So, like, that's how we are. She is, too. You understand? But I'm a different type of Taurus. 
Uh, I'm a, I'm the cuss of the Gemini Taurus. I'm my birthday's the 14th. I was born on Mother's Day, so every seven years, including this past birthday, I just had on May 14th. My birthday was actually on Mother's Day, so day the date oh, excuse me the day changes, but the date doesn't. So we hard headed. That's just how we all we we like to do things on our own. You feel me? So, um, but I appreciate you, dog. Everything that you've done or whatever, whatever. And um, I think on this media journey or whatever, whatever, we got some things set up. And uh, you got, there's a particular motherfucker I would love you to replace. I'll talk to you about that another time because I don't like that motherfucker. And he just, like, I just, let me tell you something. Everybody at Bad Boy, let me say this before I leave off. Everybody that's ever worked with me at Bad Boy, they will tell you this, right? When I, I'll tell people, yo, I don't like that motherfucker. And I used to do it when I was younger and I still do it to this day. And every, I'm going to say, I ain't going to say every time. 94% of the time, I'm fucking right. You understand? Jack, I don't like that fucking predator bitch you got around you. You understand what I'm saying? You need to get rid of her. You understand? Get rid of her. The niggas you got as management or whatever, they helped you do some number one single yet? Get rid of them. These people will latch and want to you because who you are. Not because they believe in you. You don't know. All right? Um... Other than that, man, that's all I got to say. I don't want to drag this out anymore. I just want to say thank you, King Payne. I appreciate your promotion and everything like that or whatever, whatever. And guys, make sure y'all hit the cash app. I've lost literally three weeks worth of freaking donations um, defending Jaguar right. And I really didn't know any of this stuff was going on until I tuned into a couple of bloggers. And one of the particular bloggers I tuned into was a female blogger. And I thought she was just gossiping at first. So she said, yeah, King Payne and Jaguar right and fell out. And I said, well, let me go check King Payne because I've been over there before. I'd rather get it from the horse's mouth. I don't take no rumors for nothing. So I went over there and he confirmed it the first night. I went over there and I was like, oh, all right, all right, all right. And I believe he's telling the truth. Everything ain't circumstantial evidence. It's, it's pretty solid, you know? And I think she did it under the influence of someone else based on what was presented. The TJ chick said, hey, King Payne said it. Jag didn't say it. She said it. And being that Jag was in love, infatuated, and lust, whatever the fuck y'all got to call, because you met this bitch in jail. All right? Let's keep it a buck. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know what I mean? So I, I just I just say this. When you walking around with the, <laughs> the predator, just remember, she might be duping you too. Guys, make sure y'all hit the like button, and more importantly, make sure y'all hit the cash app. I've lost weeks of cash apps, um, so I'm just here to tell y'all I'm now rescinding, rescinding my, I won't say support, I don't want nothing to happen to her, I don't want her to die, I don't want her to pass away, but I have to rescind my advocacy and my support of Jaguar right at this moment in time, and I wish her the best of luck, I hope she makes it, but um. If I were you, chick, don't say nothing else about certain in the fucking visuals. You understand? Because eyes is on you now. Niggas is digging through. You know, the nigga I, I, I used to work for owns his own network. Go be like, figure this shit out, all right? Um, wow, I didn't know, but I can't believe because she fell out with everybody. Yeah, man, she fell out with the homie, man. And, like, you know, I just, the dude's a good dude. You know, like, the, the dude's a good dude. You know, you got so many vloggers on here that they're big, got 100,000 followers, 200,000 followers, making $1,000, $2,000, $3,000 a night. And I said this before, but these niggas won't go in their pocket and they see real 100-ass motherfuckers that are bloggers. And the only thing they go by is how many people are in the chat room, but that's not the metric that YouTube uses. YouTube uses the metric now. Y'all y'all going off a paradigm that was maybe seven years ago. Now the metric that is explained now by people that actually work at YouTube is this. The metric is how long y'all stay in here, how long y'all return. That's the bigger picture here. I could have 15 motherfuckers in here. As long as those 15 motherfuckers come in here, they comment, they leave, oh, excuse me, they stay for at least 15 to 20 minutes. That's a larger measure than freaking the other shit. The same thing goes for the metric as far as the um, CPM and RPM as far as measurements of how much you're going to get paid out. You understand what I'm saying? I watched the guy give you a perfect example. Shorts is a big thing right now, right? So a guy put up a post and he said, over oh, two 
million subscriptions, excuse me, 2 million views. You know how much he got paid in CPM, meaning how much the Google AdSense paid him? 53 motherfucking dollars. <laughs> so y'all can think this view shit is where it's at or how many people are in the chat room. That's not where it's at. And that's not what YouTube uses. YouTube uses a metric. This is why you need 4,000 watch hours before you can go live. If many of y'all don't know that. You need 4,000 watch hours, meaning co a co a collectively 4,000 people, 4,000 amounts of, of watch hours for, selective, for multiple people to be able to go live on here. You can't just sign up for a YouTube account and automatically be able to go live. And then as you reach 10,000, beyond 10,000 followers like I have, you open up other options. Like before, you had to have 10,000, before this year started, you had to have 10,000 followers already before you even had the option of doing shorts. That's why I was doing shorts way earlier than everybody else. If you go back and you look at my history with shorts, I was doing shorts last year when it first started because it was offered to me. Um, Go live with me. That's another option I have. I can have people come on and go live with me on camera. You have to have over 10,000. So the metric here is... Not, well, it has to do with subscribers, how many subscribers, but it's more prone on how many subscribers you have, how many watch hours you have per month, and you'll be able to tell that because it's going to your YouTube studio. If you see two check green marks right there, that means you're doing perfect for this month. I did last night, between last night and today, I did something like 12 in the last 48 hours, and I put a screenshot up for you, and there's one from last night too. Last night, it was 10,000 views. You know what I'm saying? Today, it was 13,000 views within 48 hours. For the month, I've done over, what, 83,000 views? You know what I'm saying? And most of them are going back and looking at my old material more so than my new material because of the way the algorithm actually works. I have a lot of videos up. I have almost over 3,000 videos up. I'm not new to this. I've been doing YouTube now for almost three years, you know? I have one video that has 1.3 million views. I have another video with just me in it that has 200,000 views or whatever. But when I made the segue and I stopped talking about the hardship I was in at the time because they had gotten, you know, fixed and everything like that, and I started talking about vlogging, sometimes it went up and then sometimes it went down. It's just the way it works. I remember I've been following you when you used to be out all the time. Exactly. I had to stop going out, man. You know, I'm, I'm I, like, I don't front like a lot of people do. Yeah, man, you know, I still got it. The bins outside. Now nah, I'm fucked up right now. So if you guys, <laughs> like, I keep it a buck. I need to go to the grocery store. I need to do some more shit. I like to go back out. So if you guys would hit the cash app right now, man. Dollar sign S T R I N G E R B E L L eight zero. But I ain't going to get on here begging people or nothing like that. But, I just noticed when I started defending Jaguar and so many people were seeing something that I wasn't seeing, I guess, and I'm not shitting on what I'm just saying, it stopped people from donating to me. Like, they was like, oh, man. I mean, they were literally coming in my, my chat room going at me. And I think some of these people, they've been longtime subscribers to me or whatever, and they really love me. That's why they stayed, but they just didn't comment no more or whatever. And now when I hear what King Payne said, and I got, I can't front, I trust King Payne on this one. I trust the homie on this one. And so I, I see what was going on. But what I was saying was, with all these vloggers that have over 100,000 followers and all this stuff or whatever, whatever, and they, some of these guys are making 1000 thousand, two thousand, $3,000 a night, and they don't even have the same amount of, of, of numbers I do. Like some of these guys are just four digit, but they make their niche off of selling King Payne's drama. They make their niche off of selling Jaguar rights drama, and they get more views than both. I've seen channels, and I heard him mention it today, and I've said it before in my own diatribe. I've seen channels launch strictly off of this shit on Jaguar right on a nightly basis. What's she doing? Where's she going? Da, 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 da. Is it right or wrong? I don't know. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm not here to do that. Only thing I'm saying myself, myself personally, I have to take myself and remove myself from this because... It's so apparent that something happened, something happened, that I have no other choice. So I have to walk away. And that's it. So, guys, hopefully, the acknowledgement of that and me saying, hey, listen, I resent you won't, and I, I've never been one to go back on my word. Like, <laughs> that's just me. I'm a Taurus. I'm adamant in my shit. Like, and she's a Taurus too. So she know I'm telling the truth. I'm, I've never go back on my word. I have to resent rescind all my former advocacy of her at this moment. That doesn't mean I hate her. That doesn't mean I'm going to have future podcasts shitting on her or tell y'all not to go mess with her. I haven't said that here, and I won't say that. 
But what I will say for the interest of me and the, and the prosperity of my channel and prosperity of my members who obviously don't want to hear about any, her in any light, I have to resent, excuse me, resent my um, advocacy at this point. And further than that, I think what you did to King Payne was just dead ass wrong. I think what you did to that woman, if it is true, and at the lowest she gave you a thousand dollars, I just think it's dead ass wrong. You don't bite the hand that feeds you, and you don't get influenced because of infatuation, love, lust, whatever the fuck you want to call it. And I think that's what's happening here. And if you ask me, the reason when I saw that video when TJ and her were talking to each other, she was questioning her, talking about who said what, and King Payne's name got mentioned or whatever, you saw the real Jag come out, and she was mad because of that. You understand what I'm saying? She was mad because she felt like she got duped, and she felt like somebody was playing her. Therefore, like I said, offering counsel as professional, offering counsel, you need to start watching the motherfuckers you around because that seems to be the problem. You around people that are under you. And then when you get someone that's at the level of where you're trying to go and uplift you, since you're so used to being around people like that, when people like King Payne or that young lady that gave you that thousand dollars or or three thousand dollars, however you want to measure it, you can't even separate the two. My name's Davin Lewis, man. Make sure y'all hit up the cash app, dollar sign, S-T-R-I-N-G-E-R-B-E-L-L-8-0. I'll talk to y'all later. Y'all make sure y'all go check out the official King Pay. Subscribe to his channel, like his channel, and donate over there, too. Get some paper, man. We're trying to get it back. You understand? Y'all going to donate to all the people that are whack. Donate to the people on track. I'll holler at you.